basically starts as uh, 3.30, the alarm goes off, I get up, I get a cup of tea, I shower, dress, stop by the police station on my way in, and then I'm in here usually by about a quarter to five. First thing I do when I come in is uh, run off the weather and put it in the uh, trafficking slot, check the facts, turn on the copier, come in, run off sports for David, and make my police calls. Like there's 24 police stations that I call to see if anything has happened overnight. Well, I start about quarter to six in the morning, and I come in and I get the sports ready. And uh, at six o'clock, Mary Kay and I co-anchor the news. And then at 6.30, I do just the sports. Then at seven, we co-anchor the news again, 7.30, the sports. And you can see a pattern developing there. We have a good working relationship. Uh, he comes in about a quarter to six, and we go on the air together at six o'clock to do to co-anchor the news and usually when he comes in i've got a sports ready for him and he goes through and picks out what he's going to use and what he's not going to use and then we debate over how we're going to line up the newscast so it runs smoothly i help her write some of the news copy in the morning but my day really gets underway about 8 30 when we start covering the day's events and in, in my capacity as news director, I have to decide what we're going to cover and who's going to cover it and how we're going to spread our staff around the valley. And at times it's challenging because we have 13 counties and three states that we try to cover with three people. And uh, our part-time correspondent in Weirton Steubenville. So uh, you can see it's quite a challenge to get it all covered. You'd be surprised how crazy things are in the last couple of minutes before the newscast. Often news is still coming in as the music's playing at the beginning of the newscast and someone's frantically typing up a story over in the office and comes flying into the news studio with a copy in hand. It's a frantic pace at times and people don't realize that because you try to keep it smooth, but uh, they laugh hysterically if they could see what goes on before the newscast. 
people don't realize that we prepare our copy. People think I just come in and I sit down and I read. That's not it. A lot of the stories that we use, we go out and get ourselves. We write and we rewrite. Anything that comes off of the, the wire, we rewrite. So it's just not a, a rip and read newscast. We put it together ourselves. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's in a way like coming home in the morning because I come in and I'm surrounded by familiar people and familiar faces and I enjoy being with these people. My dad has finally lightened up on me. He's been my worst critic, but uh, he's, he's not done it anymore. Top stories. 22 United Nations peacekeepers are killed in Somalia and the state takes a West Liberty couple to the bank over an unpaid tax bill. Our next news will be at 8.30. Good morning, I'm David Deverest. And I'm Barry Kay. Now back to Tom Miller on 1170 WWVA. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, David. You know how uh, our signal at night in particular is uh, quite large, reaching, what, 18 states and uh, six provinces in Canada? Oh, it sure is. Uh, I got an interesting letter here. Uh, received this uh, last Friday, as a matter of fact. And it's from Lundsberg, Sweden, and a gentleman by the name of Rolf. Now, we should explain to the, uh, the radio audience that this would not be a routine part of our signal. It's part of an uh, engineering term called a sky wave. But uh, it bounced into Lundsberg, Sweden, and I guess with some regularity we get out to uh, that part of the world and other parts of it as well. The listeners to, uh, to probably any radio station, but of course our focus is, is on our station here, they're very, um, they will let you know what they do and don't like very quickly. Um, they uh, uh, love to give feedback. Uh, they, if they disagree with something, they'll let you know. Um, they love to play trivia. One of the things that we do every hour in the morning is play trivia. And uh, the more obscure the question, the more uh, bizarre the question, the more they seem to like it. Um, we, we award tickets to uh, the Jamboree shows uh, for that. Um, I know Mary Kay was talking about feedback. We get feedback on the news if uh, there's a story that's of interest. If they've missed a portion of it, they'll call in and ask uh, some further details about it. Um, and they oftentimes are, are a good source of information for us. They'll hear about the accidents on their way to work, uh, or they'll hear something on uh, uh, some other source and uh, let us know about it. So there's a lot of good feedback from the listeners. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, David. It's 11 after 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we have a special guest in the control room this morning. Uh, Chuck Hood is our guest, and Chuck is the uh, past president and chairman of the board of uh, United Cerebral Palsy of uh, the Ohio Valley. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, Tom. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to have you in here this morning. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. United Cerebral Palsy. Um, uh, what, a, what a great cause uh, we have here. Tell us a definition of cerebral palsy. Well, basically, uh, it's kind of misunderstood, Tom. Uh, cerebral palsy is not a disease, it's a condition. Mm -hmm. And it's a condition that normally uh, happens prior to or during birth, uh, although it can happen through direct trauma to the brain. Uh, but normally, as I say, it happens prior to or during birth. Uh, it's a non-progressive condition, uh, so normally uh, it doesn't get any worse. Uh, and it's a condition that is not curable. So it's something that our clients have to live with, basically. Yeah. You've been involved with cerebral palsy for how long now, Chuck? Uh, going on 12 years. 12 years, long, long time. Of course, the, the news in the morning uh, is a, a little longer than, uh, than most stations would have on. We have a program called Reporter's Notebook, which is a real focus of the news stories during the week. Uh, that airs at uh, 12.05 on Saturdays. And it really is a synopsis of the major news stories of the week. Each of our reporters will put together a feature, um, and uh, uh, it, it runs 15 minutes. We also have other uh, long-form programs, uh, such as Health Time, which is with uh, our, uh, Bill Berg, who does uh, our 9 to, to uh, 2 show each day, Monday through Friday. It's a, a focus on health care issues, uh, ranging from uh, uh, insurance problems to uh, current techniques and in healthcare, um, uh, focuses on uh, uh, sports medicine, uh, and each each uh, Monday he will have a special guest in from the Ohio Valley Medical Center or East Ohio Regional Hospital to discuss uh, current healthcare issues. Uh, and there are from time to time other special guests as uh, as the need would arise. Uh, we've had. Uh, 
anyone from uh, George Jones, uh, some of the country stars, to uh, uh, the mayor of the city. So it's just it's a wide range of interview kind of format. Now the telethon, uh, as a part of this uh, this portion of our video, as a matter of fact, uh, the telethon was held in January of this year, and uh, is it the same month for next year? Do you know? Absolutely. So, yes. Uh -huh. We'll be doing it. Uh, it really, uh, our telethon is normally set uh, by when the Super Bowl is. We are usually the weekend that the Super Bowl isn't, mm -hmm. and depending on how they do the playoffs and so forth. Uh, one year we ended up in February because of the scheduling of the football games, mm -hmm. but that's okay. We can uh, we can live with that, and uh, and we work around it. But uh, uh, no, that's how, that's how they normally determine the date for the telethon. Okay, Chuck, we'll take a little break here, and we're back in just a little while with more uh, about UCP. <laughs> In particular, with with the AM, because it, it is, it's been around for so many years that it's uh, really become synonymous with the community, with the Wheeling, the general Wheeling area community, and a lot of our listeners uh, have a very strong identification with the radio station. In the beginning, uh, it was a mom and pop, like many radio stations uh, were started. It was kind of experimental in the beginning. Uh, they don't, you know, many stations went on the air not knowing whether they would be on the air tomorrow or not. You start and take it one day at a time, like the song went. Uh, so that's really how it started. It started in a house, and many uh, radio stations began that way. The, the pioneer stations, anyway, the ones uh, that started in the 20s. Many of them started in individuals' homes. They worked out of their living rooms. They would clear the furniture out and broadcast from various rooms of the home uh, to try to get it started until they could see if they could be successful enough. They weren't really advertised or supported in the very early days. Uh, they were just people uh, putting together their own money, trying to get a few investors together who were local and put the, pool their funds put the radio station on the air and try to uh, get it going and try to see if there was enough interest. Of course, receivers in the early days, there weren't many receivers on the market yet. That took a while to get going, and some early pioneers had to, had to blaze those trails. And uh, WWBA, starting in 1926, was uh, among the very first radio stations in America, with nearby KDKA, of course, over in Pittsburgh being the very first. And uh, just a few years later, uh, WWBA came on the radio in 1926. It never fails that when you go out and you mention the call letters, I mean, they're magical, and you'll always hear a story. Uh, I was in the sea of Japan during World War II, and I picked the radio station up, or, uh, you know, I was in Canada fishing or whatever it may be, and you pick the station up at night. Uh, everybody's got a story where they, they've been at one time or another uh, when they've been away from home, and yet a little piece of wheeling comes into wherever they're at, so they, they have a real strong identity with the station there. Alabama this morning and Born Country. Good morning, Tom Miller in the early morning show, 16 past 8, 8 16. Our special guest in the studio this morning is uh, Chuck Hood. Chuck is the chairman of the board of the uh, United Cerebral Palsy of the Upper Ohio Valley. And uh, Chuck, there are, uh, aside from the obvious success of uh, WTOV Channel 9's telethon, there are, must be other fundraisers during the year. That... WWVA basically is uh, the AM station that's geared toward a little older audience. Um, we find